say that it's it's a balance. Like there has to be yes, we are we are stretch lab and we want them to stretch. PNF stretching can can improve muscle strength as well. Mm. Yes. So you have to have the other side of the coin in order to improve imbalances. Yeah. And you have to be yes. doing them correctly. And that's why you need an expert to yeah. be with you. I so love that. I actually did a survey amongst our <clears throat> members and asked them like what is most important to you? And they really did respond to catching up with my flexologist. <laughs> Really? How do you get through to someone? Like how long it's going to take to, to get them moving better, feeling better? What type of reactions are, are you getting from that person? Um, I think it depends on, I guess, how tight they are or mm. what their goals are. You know, we just tell them that it's not a quick fix, just like with personal training or nutrition. Like you can't just come stretch one time and then just be fixed. So it takes time and patience and we're there to help them. Phil, I have a question for you. What have you ever seen a lion stretch before he went and chased a gazelle? <laughs> I don't think so. I've never it's, seen a, I mean, it, I've seen a lion chase a gazelle on TV. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But I, you I know what? They, I think it was because he didn't have a flexologist <laughs> in his corner. They probably didn't have flexologists in their pride. Uh, so we have all these tight lions. That, they have a pretty, pretty low kill rate. So, do they? Yeah, yeah. I watched some wow. nature documentary about it and uh, it turns out they don't, t they don't kill as much as they I mean, when they do kill, it's it's huge, but you know, so yeah. Maybe, maybe they maybe we need uh, Amanda and Katie to go over there and stretch these lions out, dude, <laughs> yeah, you know, man. maybe get them moving a little bit better. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. So Katie and Amanda today from Stretch Lab uh, are here to talk to us all about flexology, mm -hmm. um, stretching. I really liked how we talked about not only flexibility but also mobility and strength. That was kind of like my biggest takeaway. Being flexible is one thing, but being mobile and being strong while also being flexible is is super important. And so uh, everyone knows they need to stretch. It's just one of those things that we never do. Yeah. Even, you know, like fitness is what I do for a living and I work out regularly, but my stretching is still lacking yeah. and I know it. Stretch Lab, their entire premise is to hold people accountable to their stretching. And they also do it in a way that is better than how you can do it on your own through P and F stretching. So uh, I'm not gonna lie, I forgot exactly what P and F stands for. It was for. quite an acronym. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. I was just like, I did not expect it to be that. I was like, oh, okay. Uh -huh. But y'all have to listen to find out what it is. Yeah. So listen in, uh, learn about PNF stretching, uh, how it can be beneficial. You can do some PNF stretching on your own. I thought that was really cool as well. Um, but if you want someone to help you, go see Amanda and Katie at Stretch Lab. And if you need help with your fitness side of things, obviously we're here to help you as well at OTG Fitness. So guys, listen in to this episode uh, from Katie and Amanda from Stretch Lab and learn all about flexology. All right, so why don't you tell us what a flexologist is? I've heard this term as Stretch Lab has gotten more popular, I guess. Um, you guys have a couple of locations in our area, and I've heard of this flexologist. And so uh, you are a flexologist, yes. right? Yes, I am. What exactly does that mean? So a flexologist is someone who goes through a certification process to learn proper assisted stretching. Um, we go through online training, we do a two-day workshop, we do internship, and we just learn how to properly stretch people. Were you super into stretching yourself before you learned all this stuff? I was, probably not as much as I should have been, but now <clears throat> I do it on the daily. Really? Yeah. What is one or two things that you <clears throat> learned during that certification process that kind of opened your eyes to, man, I should be doing this more? Um. Well, to be honest, it's the type of stretching that we do, which we'll go over, but mm -hmm. um, it's just knowing how my body moves and how it reacts to the stretch. Uh -huh. yeah. And have you seen major benefits for yes. yourself? Absolutely. Tell mm -hmm. us about just like a couple of those. Well, I'm very active with sports and kids and, you know, you play on the ground with your kids and it just, it helps me stay more mobile and more uh -huh. flexible. Sure. And what about yourself? Have you seen, uh, since you started with Stretch Lab, have you been more into the stretching yourself as well? Yeah, I would definitely say that, you know, I had a QL strain like recently and I was in a lot of pain for over a month and stretching allowed me to come back into moving my body again in a healthy and safe way. Wow. Well, what happened? 
Um, I was actually at the gym. I wasn't doing anything too dramatic, just, you know, moving from a standing position to a seated position. And I just strained a muscle in my low back and in my hip. So I, I definitely relied on stretching a lot to get moving again once I was pain free. And you do a combination of self stretching and the assisted stretching. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Nice. Uh, how do you split that up? Like how much are you doing as assisted or what do you guys recommend? How much assisted versus on your own? Yeah. So typically people come to see us at stretch lab once or twice a week. So just depending on how targeted their needs are, if they need a full body, sometimes they just come once a week. If it's a more targeted thing, sometimes they split it up over two 25 minute sessions throughout the week. Okay. And you guys are kind of making that recommendation based upon what they tell you, like in a consultation, I'm Correct. assuming. They come in for a 50 minute introductory stretch Okay, and the flexologist just, it's an assessment. Um, we, it's, it's stretching, head to toe, uh, we go off their lifestyle and their past injuries or surgeries that they've had and then what their goals are. So then we kind of give a re recommendation from there. Yeah, so it's, it's a very in-depth um, yeah. type of situation. So yeah. very personalized stretching yes. approach because mm -hmm. everyone's heard of like a, a personalized workout program, like which is what I do, mm -hmm. right? But I feel like not many people maybe have heard of a personalized stretching approach. It's actually very similar to personal training. Um, you know, you make relationships with the people at Stretch Lab and with your clients. Mm -hmm. uh, we keep notes on them every time they come in and then what they want to progress on, their goals. It's, I love it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, maybe the way that we can move here, though, then is to maybe think about someone. You could think of a particular client if you only had to say any names or anything, but <clears throat> let's maybe talk about why it's important for, you know, different types of people. Because I feel like you hear, Stretching is important. Stretching is important. Make sure you get your stretches in. Stretch every morning. Stretch every night. But a lot of people, like, they know it's important, but maybe they don't know why. Yeah. So can we talk about maybe someone that doesn't even work out very much, that they're trying to get started? Like, wh what are the benefits of stretching? Why should someone be stretching even if they're not, you know, this this super athlete? Like if they're not active. They right. Just, um, well, to be honest, our – there's a lot of people I'm thinking of. Okay. But our demographic does lead to, you know, a little bit older, uh, 40s up. Um, a lot of post-hip surgeries, maybe mm. some knee replacements, and just people who just are not very active. They, they've lost a lot of mobility. And to be honest, like our, our – is it a quote? Whatever. The back of our stretch lab, I mean, yeah, says live long. So mm. it really is your quality of life. It's just keeping that range of motion um, and mobility in your joints. How does just, the protocol change? Like if someone has been through like a surgery, like a hip surgery, you said. Yeah. So obviously they can't come. To, we're not rehab. We can't, mm -hmm. we can't rehabilitate their hips or their joints. Um, they just have to have a doctor's note just mm -hmm. stating that they want to come get stretched again. And their doctor either says, okay or no. Mm -hmm. So, and then everything's modified for the injury. So even if someone doesn't move well at all, Mm -hmm. You're going to find a way to help them start stretching, right? You could bring a board into me and I'll figure out how to get <laughs> yeah. them loose and limber. Yeah. It will take a little bit longer for that person. But sure. Yeah. How do, how, do you set that, how do you set that expectation for someone? Like, you know, if I'm assuming that after that first uh, introductory session, you can kind of get an idea mm -hmm. and you're like, oh my gosh, this guy can barely move <laughs> or like, hey, you're not doing too bad. You know, so how, how do you get through to someone, like how long it's going to take to, to get them moving better, feeling better? And then, you know, what type of reactions are, are you getting from that person? Um, I think it depends on, I guess, how tight they are or mm -hmm. what their goals are. Um, and, you know, we just tell them that it's not, it's not a quick fix. Mm -hmm. um, just like with personal training or nutrition, like you can't just come stretch one time and then just be fixed. So it takes time and patience. And we're there to help them yeah. reach their goals. What, what about someone that, you know, is really active and feels like they don't need to stretch, you know, because they are really, really active already? I'm assuming there's lots of benefits for them too, right? Like what are some of those? Yeah. Yeah, so we have quite a few um, athletes that come into the studio okay. that range from triathletes to tiny little cheerleaders and dancers. So mm -hmm. we try to pair them with a flexologist that has some background. So um, when Katie was talking about the flexologist position, they do a branded nationally accredited training with us, but they also come to us with some level of certification on their own that's in body work. So sometimes that's yoga or Pilates or Personal PTA. Trainers, yeah. 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 Mm. 
Exactly. So um, we try to pair them with a flexologist that has some background in what they're dealing with. So we have, you know, for instance, at Clear Lake, we have a flexologist that was a former dancer. So a lot of the times we put the dancers with her and um, she's able to meet them where they are. Yeah. And I'm assuming that it's a combination of the knowledge and then also the connection. Because Absolutely. Because what I've noticed in personal training, probably very similar to you guys, the most important thing is that someone does it for long enough mm-hmm. to get the result that they're wanting and your ability to pair someone up with someone that they can connect with and chat with is just as important as them knowing that, oh, if I turn this little bit of angle, that's going to be really applicable to, to yeah. your sport. You know, it's as more successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we actually did a survey amongst our <clears throat> members and asked them, like, what is most important to you? And they really did respond to catching up with my flexologist. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you, uh, as a flexologist, how do you feel about that? Does that make you feel better? Or are you like, man, I wish they kind of cared more about their stretching? <laughs> oh, well, both. I'm a very um, outgoing individual. Uh-huh. So I don't mind if they lay on the table while I'm doing their stretching if they need to tell me about their week or, you know, we're kind of a different types of therapists. You know, people come and vent or get stress relief as well is one of the benefits of stretching. So mm-hmm. I enjoy it yeah, very much. Do, do people tell you about that, like, specifically, or does it take a survey for you to realize that? Um, like, for the stress relief thing, do they do they tell you about that and, like, how they feel better about being able to talk oh, about things uh, and stuff? Maybe not, maybe not right out saying okay, it, yeah. but sometimes I can just tell. But you I'm, can tell people who come and just lay on the table. And go through their stretching, like they just kind of, they're venting mm-hmm. about something. And they're like, oh, I feel good, you know, talking about the stretch. And then they just go about their day. Yeah. W- what see percentage What percentage of the people that you see are actively exercising versus not? You mean on their own time? Yes, yes. Like outside of your their sessions with you, what percentage of them are like active gym goers or athletes versus not? Oh, what would you say? 25, 75? 75 non-active, yeah. Really? I I think so. I never would have guessed. Mm -hmm. I would think that it's people that work out regularly. Like, man, I know I need to stretch, but either I don't like to or I don't want to. I just don't, I can't make it a habit. Yeah. I think we provide accountability for people and it helps them bridge the gap between being sedentary and then starting something new Mm -hmm. that's very much more active. So we have some people that come to us and they only stay for three months, but we're really happy because a lot of the times at the end they say, I'm going to go on and do yoga or Pilates or personal training or whatever that looks like. So we just help them move their body and get in that consistency and accountability. That's really what we do. And, um, it helps them a lot. Yeah. I feel like that is very admirable because very few people in our industry can say things like that. You know, it's always like, we need to keep them longer. We need to hold them in here, get them on a subscription and, you know, um, but if you actually want what's best for someone, that's not always the case. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes it is, but other times it's not. We do have not. quite a few original members um, when we opened two years ago wow. that still come to see us, yeah. Dang. Because they don't like to stretch <clears throat> on their own. Sure. So that's why they come. And would, would those usually be the ath- more athletic people that are staying for no. those? Around? No. No. I think they notice, though, when they stop stretching, how they feel. And so they do it for long-term maintenance. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times it is those people that are more sedentary, that don't move throughout the week, that need us to keep moving. We have a member um, that literally uses us to be able to walk around. Like she feels too tight during the week if she doesn't come twice a week to Mm -hmm. be able to, to move her body. So. And yeah. she's honest with herself. She just she just knows she won't really do much on her own. Exactly. So uh-huh. she just still comes to us. Yeah. I was going to ask, my next question was going to be like if any um, particular like success stories that you've seen that really stand out to you that they made a major transformation from being committed to stretching that someone might not uh, expect to be yeah. so large of a transformation. Um, we had a little interview a few months back. It was a teacher who was getting um, knee injections, correct? She was getting knee injections. She was in a lot of pain. You know, she was going to the doctor, doing all this stuff to help. Um, And then she came and stretched with us for quite a few months, and now she doesn't take any pain meds. Um, 
the cortisone shots is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. the, okay, the knee injections. Um, yeah. So it's, she's just, she doesn't go to the doctor as much and she doesn't take as much pain meds. Wow. Yeah. I mean, to be from, from, uh, cortisone injections yeah. to not yeah, and still living, having the same quality of life, like you mentioned earlier. Yes. Yeah. is amazing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's just from stretching twice a week. Yep. And then, and she's a teacher. I mean, she's on her feet all day uh -huh. dealing with kids and all that. Yeah. She would come see us twice a week. And what percentage of your client base does the homework that you give them. <laughs> Honestly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, your best guess, right? Oh, 10%? Okay, yeah. Seven. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so most of the, they are getting the benefits from the sessions yeah. specifically. Because, yes. yeah, we, we see the same thing in personal training. Very few people do the things outside of their mm -hmm. sessions that they're supposed to be doing. And that's okay. I think you mentioned it earlier that – most people come to a service like this for accountability. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get some people that just don't know what to do. Yeah. And you're there to educate them, right? And that happens sometimes. But most of the time, people know what to do, right? Everybody knows. This is something that I, that I jokingly say to, to clients is everybody knows more salad, less pizza, <laughs> right? This is simple stuff, right? But the, the doing it part. I was is about to say, difficult. there's a difference between knowing and doing. That's for correct. Sure. Yeah, yeah, especially like in today's uh, internet world, right? You just get so much information. Like well, everybody knows what to do, mm -hmm. but it's just the doing it part, right? Well, and speaking of doing it, can we talk about like the specific types of stretching that you guys do? Mm -hmm. um, I know it's called PNF stretching is the protocol that you guys follow. What is PNF? What does it mean? Why is it different than regular stretching? What's what's going on there? Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation is what it stands for. It's a push and release style stretching where the muscle is contracted and then relaxed. And um, yeah, Katie, can you tell us some more about PNF stretching? Yes, your mm -hmm. proprioception is your body's awareness and how it moves. Um, which there, I love educating my clients. A lot of people come in and I'll go into a few stretches and they're like, wow, I didn't even know my body could do that. I didn't even know I could move like that. Like magic. Yes, neuromuscular is your nerves and your muscles and then facilitating is the stretching, is assisted stretching. That's so, where that fancy word comes from. Yeah, <laughs> can you tell me exactly what, I know you said it's contracting and stretching. Like what, if you were to come in and I would tell you, hey, I wanna stretch my hamstring. Yep. So what does a PNF protocol of stretching look like if I want to stretch my hamstring? So when they come in, we explain the process of PNF. You know, we get them now on the table. I'll just be like, hey, we're going to go into this um, hamstring stretch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have you take a deep breath. And then when you exhale, we're going to go into a comfortable tension. So we don't even, we don't stretch into any kind of pain levels. We go at a comfortable tension. Um, we're going to hold that stretch for about 10 seconds and then you'll contract into me or my, like my hand or my shoulder, wherever we have the, um, the stretch for about five seconds. And then when you relax, like they take another deep breath and relax, potentially that muscle just goes a little bit further into that range of motion while keeping that same tension. And how long are you holding that second one? For about 15 seconds. Okay. Yeah. So, it's like so it's like 10, 5, 15 or 20 seconds. So it's <clears throat> almost a minute, a little over a mm -hmm. half of a half of a minute. Per stretch and do you you kind of do that one time and then you move on to the the other leg or depending on how tight or loose yeah. someone in maybe you could spend more time there how does how does that work so when intros come in it's just one pnf cycle is what it's called one contract and relax mm -hmm. with the full body assessment um and that's actually what we how we make our stretching program is as they progress we add those pnf cycles okay yeah i got you yeah. and how do you determine what body parts to do? Is it just by your feedback of the person? And when you're in there and you're doing that initial time, are you like making notes on which parts of their body are the tightest, the loosest? How does that work? Yes, go? we make notes on all of our clients. Um, some muscles are a little bit more stubborn than others, so they may not progress as quicker. Mm -hmm. It just depends on the person. Um, but yeah, because when people come in for their appointments, sometimes they don't always go to the same flexologist. They'll right. go to a different one. So we keep we keep tabs and notes on all of our clients that come in. What are, are some of those specific body parts that are maybe kind of tricky or laggy or that everyone well, struggles hamstring, with? Well, hamstrings are very popular. Oh, so I had a good, yes. I had a good example. Okay. <laughs> yes. uh, piriformis <clears throat> stretch. Um, Can yeah. you break that one down for me? The piriformis is a very super deep glued muscle. Okay. Um, you know the, <clears throat> gosh, what is that stretch called? 
like when you're doing pigeon? It your, pigeon pose. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's mm -hmm. like the pigeon pose, but obviously they're laying on their back and we just put their leg in that position. Okay, I got you. Uh, yeah. If people who sit down yes. for their jobs, a lot of sitting, right. it's very, very tight. Yeah, if you're not familiar with what a pigeon is, that's where you would put, uh, you have one foot in front of you, one behind you. Yes. Uh, the front foot at roughly a 90 degree angle, mm -hmm. may, may be a little tighter and you lean forward and you feel that really deep stretch yes. in that front hip. So yes. as a flexologist for the assisted style, same thing, but they're inverted. Correct. They're on their back and you're... And we're placing the leg. And you're pushing into mm -hmm. it, yeah. So can someone do the pigeon, P and F, on their own? Like on the yes. ground? Yeah, they mm -hmm. could. Um, they just go... I mean, you're using more gravity right. instead of being assisted. Yeah. Um, or with a stretch strap. Or with a stretch strap. Oh, okay. Do so. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys use those during the sessions? Um, not Typically, we have we hosted, do workshops. We do workshops. We have hosted a couple group sessions mm -hmm. where, say, I'm in the. We have about eight or nine tables in our studio, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we can get about eight or nine people, and I will demo the stretch with the strap, and they're all doing in the strap, and it's just educating them, and we sell them. Um, it would help them do stretching on their own at home. And you'll create like a, a stretching protocol yeah. for for yeah. them to do. And sometimes in those workshops, we will incorporate the PNF. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And how Just would so I? They, so they are. So they know how to do it. Yeah. So you mentioned the hamstring. Uh, what exactly? How how can I stretch my hamstring in a PNF style, like at home? What would you recommend? How would um, I do that? I would do the strap, or if you didn't have a strap, it'd be a belt or a rope or something oh, that you, you okay. could kind of hook the bottom of your foot, mm -hmm. bring it up nice and easy to your tension level. And you could do the same thing. You just kind of, once you, when you're contracting, you just kind of push into that rope yeah. just to add that resistance and then uh, focus on taking your deep breaths and then pull it in a little so bit. So I, I would lay on my back, throw the belt around the yeah. flat of the foot. Yep. Yeah. Pull it back, feel a nice, not to pain, you said, right? You Correct. Don't, you don't want to feel pain. Correct. But you want to feel good tension. And then I guess I would like push down. You push down. Against mm -hmm. the rope to try to flex the hamstring. Yep. For 10 seconds. About five, yeah. Five, five seconds. Six, yeah. And then re release relax my breath, and just... relax, and see if I can get a deeper stretch. Yeah. Okay. Th both of those are kind of lower body things. Any mm -hmm. particular upper body parts that people struggle with? Um, I've had a, quite a few tight pectoral, um, just because I stretch a lot of people who do have desk jobs. You know, your shoulders are hunched over, your, mm -hmm. your pecs short, and they just get kind of tight. So I would say up there. Yeah, and how, how would you how would you stretch that at home? Um, door, we call it the door frame stretch. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. just put your arm at a 90 degree angle and just slowly ease into it to open up that chest. Yeah, and so you do the same thing, right? You'd be 90 degree angle, yep. stretch, and then you would drive your forearm into kind of the door. into the door, flex. Yes. And it's a it's a static push, so you don't want your body to move while you're doing it. Uh-huh. Or an isometric. Is that the correct word? I hope that's the correct yeah, word. Yeah, isometric would be like where you're not moving. <laughs> correct, yeah. yeah so yeah, you'll yeah. push for about five seconds, and then when you relax, potentially that chest will open up just a little bit more. Uh-huh. And I have to ask, are you, we're talking a lot about, like, doing the stretches at home and yep. stuff like that. Do you guys do that yourself, or do you – I know you said as you are overcoming this injury, you did both. <laughs> but in general, do you guys do a lot of this stuff on your own? Or are you usually always doing an assisted style for yourself? Um, I actually do. I've been with Stretch Lab for two years now, oh, and okay. I do incorporate it at home now. Um, I'm a gym goer okay. like yourself, and I have a yoga mat, and I have a stretch strap at home, and I also have a massage gun, like one of those Thera yeah, guns. Cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And yeah. Do, you, do you incorporate that yourself? I do. Do you all incorporate that at Stretch Lab at we all? We do. Ooh, okay. Yes. Let's talk about it. Can we, can we talk about that <laughs> sure. then? Okay. So tell me, what what are the benefits of the Theragun? Why why would you incorporate the Theragun with someone and maybe someone else you wouldn't? Uh, maybe depending on pain level, if they're coming okay. in and they're really, really stiff or tight. Mm -hmm. um, well, some people just don't want to use it either. Yeah, like some people come don't. come in and they'll say, I just want to stretch. <clears throat> so... Some people love it, and we have to kind of cut them off. Yeah. Like, we need to stretch. <laughs> yeah. Let's put the gun down. So in an ideal world, you would be doing both, it mm -hmm. sounds yes. like. Okay. I like to start off with a few minutes of the Theragun on the area that I'm going to stretch because okay. it does help, you know, break up the fascia mm -hmm. and warm mm -hmm. up the muscle. So you're just using it on an area that's not being stretched first. Yes. Correct. Okay. So let's go back to the hamstring Kay. situation, right? So if I was at home and I had a Theragun of my own. 
if I really wanted to hit the hamstrings, I could use the Theragun mm-hmm. for a minute or two. Yeah, just a couple minutes. Yep, and then do the PNF stretch. Yep. And if I do that, how often would you recommend? Oh gosh, if you're doing it at home, I've you could do it every day. I was gonna say every day. Yeah, every yeah. Day. twice a day. Is that better? Yeah. How many how many people do you think would actually do it twice a day? Like, do you make that recommendation to people? I usually recommend just once a day. Yeah, I I kind of yeah. I'm glad we're on the same page. <laughs> I agree because unless the client's killing it and they're doing it every day and they want more results, I'm like, well, okay, just do or it in the morning, like a do it at night. Triathlete or something, yes. and they like are very focused on their sport and recovery and like injury prevention. Then obviously they there are par- they probably already are doing it multiple times mm-hmm. a day. Yeah, for sure. Your athletes are going to be more committed. They have yeah. a competition coming up or yeah, or races, something like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, any other upper body areas? You said the chest. I don't know. How, do you do anything like with the arms, the the lats? Like, do you are, is stretching important on these smaller body parts? Like even the calf. You know, yes, not we do. Like, um, gosh, ninety percent of our clients have really really tight calves, so we okay. do stretch the calves a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can use the massage gun on the calves. Um, it's just a really tender area. Yeah. Um, we stretch the forearms and the wrist out a little bit. There is a bicep stretch. We do. Uh, internal, external rotation of the shoulders, um, trap, neck. We just kind of do a little bit of Ooh, all of it. Ooh, the neck. Can we talk about the neck? Yes. Yeah, what, what does that look like? Like, what, what kind of, you know, I'm assuming, I mean, I think every once in a while, like, if I have, like, maybe, like, a little cramp or something like yeah. that, I'll kind of, like, do this number here, you know, but nothing particular. So we do a style like that. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, they're laying down, and we're kind of manipulating their head a little bit, and their contraction is, because I have a hand here, mm-hmm. their contraction is shrugging. Mm-hmm. for about four or five seconds and then relaxing okay just trying to loosen up the the trap right there yeah and when they see you guys how long are you stretching them for oh uh, like how long mean, are this the stretch sessions yeah, what do you 25 oh, or 50 minutes. 25 or 50 minutes 25 minutes or 50 minutes mm-hmm. and how, how do you determine is it just because is it a price point situation that depends on on for what they want or like, how do, how do you determine which one they're going to be doing? I would say a lot of the times it's really whether, like, their specific issue is targeted or if it's full body. So a mm-hmm. lot of people come in with just general stiffness and tightness, and we're always going to suggest that they do 50 minutes. But somebody else may come in with, like, hey, I have a hamstring in, 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 injury, so they're going to do 25 minutes because that's all they care about. They're not feeling any pain or stiffness in any other part of their body, so they may only need that. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. So that because you're you're working on that one area yeah. pretty much the whole time. There may be a couple of supporting yeah, areas. Yeah, correct. And I know. don't really recommend stretching 50 minutes on just one spot. <laughs> right. Sure, that's it's a little excessive. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. I I could definitely see that, and I feel like uh, what is the real benefit after X amount of time? You know, it's like I'm one yeah, of those I agree. diminishing returns. That's mm-hmm. why I was kind of asking earlier. Like, is twice a day better than once a day? But being spread out, mm-hmm. you definitely still get the benefit, you know. Well, and at home, they're probably only doing that stretch for like a minute or two. So yeah. I, I wouldn't think they would be overstretching if they did it in the morning and at night. Yeah, I'll say uh, that's very accurate for myself. For <laughs> sure. My, my, own, uh, my own personal stretch sessions don't exactly last very long. What, what percentage uh, of the clients that are coming in are coming in because of an acute issue that they're having versus the more general, Hey, I just feel tight. You know, I want to move better. Um, I would say the motivation to seek out our services does a lot of the times have that type of injury. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, Yeah. They have that type. They have some injury that's happened and maybe that was a long time ago, but they still, it still acts up for them or whatever, Mm -hmm. but they have something that is, cause them to reach out and then you know they also have general stiffness like the all of us do like mm-hmm. when katie was talking about stretching their wrists and stuff i'm thinking like a lot of people are at desks all day long and they have that stiffness from their wrists and so um yeah we see we see a little bit i would say 50 50 but they tend to have something that's caused them to seek us In, out initially yes whether In, it's new or old right new right. injury or old injury and of the people that come in in that like specific situation, do you often during that initial time you find the other areas that they also may need to work on? Oh yes. And then once you do, they're like, oh my gosh, I I knew I had this hamstring thing, 
but like my shoulders feel so much better now too. Yes. And a lot of times people will come in with, you know, say a, um, their right hamstring being sore, it's the other side of their body that's actually tighter because they've been compensating for that said injury. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts? And they get educated on it because they're like, wow, I'm actually tighter on this side. And so it's, it's, I love educating my clients mm -hmm. and letting them know like, you know, your life movements and, and how your body gets affected. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on why that is? How, uh, like why the, the compensation thing is happening to so many people? I just think that the other part of the body is just working overtime. Mm -hmm. Like it's taking on more of the weight, it's taking on more of the strain because it's trying to protect the injury. Oh, so, so it's you're thinking you're saying that it's usually some type of injury and then they're compensating for that injury. Correct. Because I'm thinking of like myself, I'm sitting here, I almost always sit like on my right. Okay, hip I see what you're asking. Oh, yeah. Bit, Functional you know? movements. Yes. That you yes. Do every I drive, day. I drive like this. Uh -huh. or, and like my hip will be cocked Same. Uh -huh. or I've played volleyball for 22 years and my right hip is my landing leg. So it's way tighter than my other leg. So that's just, um, everyday life repetition. Yeah. does yeah. affect. I've even seen, uh, I don't know if you ever heard this. Have you ever heard the, that like 50% of statistics are made up? Have like yes. you, you ever heard that? So I don't know how true this is, but I do remember reading uh, this article one time. It was talking about like women, how they had this problem a lot women with kids mm -hmm. because they always hike their kid up yep. on the same hip forever. And if they have multiple kids, they've been doing it. They did it for a couple of years with the first one and then a couple more years with the other one. You know, so is, is that like the hip thing maybe with like hold, holding kids up for, yeah. for women? I can is... dive into that statistic. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have three kids okay. and I'm a lefty. Okay. All my kids were held fed, um, carried all on my right side. And I have a very messed up right shoulder uh -huh. <laughs> and even my wrist. Cause you know, it would just stay like this to hold the kid. My right hip is cocked. So yeah, I think, and I did that for, gosh, how old is my oldest one? Nine, about nine ish years. Did you even notice in, in that not. time frame? Mm -mm. How did you end up finding, is it through learning about these I things? I think so. Yeah. Just getting into, um, <clears throat> Actually, I probably discovered it when I started doing CrossFit. Like, I okay. knew I was a little unbalanced with some of my stuff, so I was way tighter on the right side. And do you still struggle with that now? Like, when you're stretching for yourself, mm -hmm. are you, like, spending extra time on that side still to this day, or do you feel like it's been kind of fixed? Uh, my hip. My right yeah. hip still. Yeah. I'll say that for myself as well. Is always, like, the whole right side of my body is a problem. Like, I've discovered that about myself, whether it's, like, a shoulder. I grew up playing baseball, so a lot of throwing oh, okay. right <clears throat> so yeah my right shoulder seems to be an issue my right hip my right i, I had shins i ran uh, my first marathon last year and like my right my right shin Ooh. i got a shin splint okay my right big toe it's like the whole right side of my body is just like an <laughs> issue <laughs> you know so uh I, i'm assuming that you guys get a, a lot yeah. of a lot of stuff it like could be that. based off your that's your dominant side Mm -hmm. Or no, is it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. Could be based off that as well. Yeah, and so just over time, it just kind of mm -hmm. adds up and adds up. And do you think that in a situation like that, a situation like that, like yourself, do you think that forever and ever you're just going to have to spend a little more time on that right side, or is maybe at some point, five years, ten years in the future, these things going to level out? I think it just depends on how consistent I am, mm. and that goes towards the clients too. Just how consistent will you be with your stretching? to loosen up and reach those goals. How consistent are you? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I would also say... I plead the fifth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would also say that it's it's a balance. Like, there has to be... Yes, we are we a are stretch lab, and we want them to stretch, but mm. they also... Um, PNF stretching can, can improve muscle strength as well. Mm. Yes. So you have to have the other side of the coin... Um, in order to improve imbalances. Yeah. And you have to be yes. doing them correctly. And that's why you need an expert to yeah. be with you. So I love that. Strengthening that is, and stretching. Yes. Yeah, strengthening is so important. Um, do you guys talk, and if this is like out of your wheelhouse a little bit, it's okay. You can just let me know. But do you guys talk about the difference between flexibility and mobility? We ever? do. Um, I guess if it's ever brought up, like if a client is asking about yeah, it. Yeah, like you know. how, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Well, mobility is how your body moves in its position, and then flexibility is your full range of motion, like how far you can take it in. Yeah, how like so, how far can you yeah. go? Yeah. yeah. When I think of strength, 
with range of motion, that's when I think of mobility, mobility. Yeah. Correct. versus flexibility, just like how far can I move? Correct. Mobility means like how far can I move and how does it feel and how does it function yes. in that? So I love that you brought up strength. Yeah. I think that's a the, misconception. Sorry, sorry. I think that's a misconception about stretch lab. A lot of the times, like people will say, oh, well, I can do yoga at home. That's fine. That's flexibility. Mm -hmm. Right. So we offer mobility as well. And so I think that's a lot of the times I educate people all the time. They're like, I don't need this. I do yoga. I'm like, OK, well, let's talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true, especially with the contracting. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was going to say. Wow. With that contract with that contraction, you're very subtly strengthening that mm -hmm. muscle and then relaxing. Um, but with senior citizens I was gonna that say, don't do anything, they're correct. actually getting a lot more strength yes. in their muscle than you know somebody yes. that's in their 30s or 40s that already has some substantial muscle in their body. Right, yeah. I think strength is definitely overlooked. Um, do you guys talk to your clients about working out at all? If not, it's okay. We, just... we ask them about like their activity level, you mm -hmm. know, what they're doing. Um, and if someone is like getting started, are you, are you like recommending that they start doing some strength training outside of their stretching or do y'all just, do you not really cover that stuff? I was well, just curious. we always recommend, we always recommend a bunch of stuff, but I guess it's on them to actually <coughs> pursue it. Yeah. I think you're, they're surrounded around like, like, like-minded individuals. Like Correct. I said, they're all kinds of different flexologists that come from different backgrounds. Mm, so they're mm -hmm. going to talk to their clients about different things. Like I have heard, you know, some flexologists talking about yoga or Pilates or whatever they, they are into they, mm -hmm. cause it's a personal relationship. So they're going to talk about being more, you know, active outside of the, uh, outside of our studio. Yeah. Uh, I just think that it's a, the, the mobility, flexibility, strength, like all of those things are so important. So you guys brought up seniors. What, uh, how many of your clients are seniors? Like what, what percent? More than, more than 50%? Uh, I guess there's different levels. Our, our demographic would be 40 or 50 plus, but seniors as in maybe 70. Like 60 plus, 60 plus. Yeah, I'd... 30%? Yeah. Wow. 30%? That's a, yeah, it's a pretty yeah. good. And they, to be honest, a lot of them don't, really work out or do a lot outside of the studio. Mm -hmm. um, so when they come into Stretch Lab, that kind of is their workout. That is their exercise, yeah. Yeah, yeah and uh, th again, that, that contraction piece of the whole equation brings in the strength and the mobility. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to get started like with stretching, does it depend how flexible you are now or – whether you're flexible or not, you should still be stretching. Because some people are just more naturally flexible than yeah. others, right? Mm -hmm. um, what's your recommendation there? Like, if you're naturally flexible, can you just, like, not worry about stretching at that point? Or what do you think? Um, I still think it's important. Mm -hmm. um, then you're you, building that strength. And you're building that strength with yes. the stretching. Yeah. Um, and it does. I don't think it matters how inflexible you are. You, I just recommend coming in and just seeing how you like it, see how your body responds, mm -hmm. and then kind of go from there. Yeah, we always say progress, not perfection. Correct. Right. So if you're progressing with your flexibility and your mobility, you are probably doing something right. Yeah. You know, how long does it take for someone to feel the benefit, see the benefit on average? So our, the way we start our memberships, I'm not going to talk about that. It is like a 90 day commitment. Okay. And then from there, it's kind of monthly because we, I believe that if someone were to come in on a consistent basis for 90 days, you're going to start seeing progress. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we encourage. So you're saying that you should be expecting to spend at least three months on this thing to get the major benefits out of so. it. How do you have that conversation with someone? Like, cause I'm assuming that most people, if y'all's clients are anything like ours, like <laughs> when they come in, it's like, Hey, I want to feel better yesterday. You know, so how, how do you go about that conversation with them and letting them know that it's like, hey, is, is this is a commitment. You need to do this on a regular basis. It's going to take a couple of months. You're going to feel a little better, right, in a week or two, but the major yeah. benefits are going to take time. How do, you, how do you set those expectations? Well, I think we do a really good job of asking all the right questions in the beginning on the phone. Like mm -hmm. we don't, before they even get to the studio, we're setting expectations. And I tell them, 
all the time. Like you didn't get like this overnight. This is not going to be an overnight fix. And if they've told us that they have tried, you know, a lot of different avenues and they've never gotten any success, um, it needs to be further, further explained that this is not going to be one time and you're going to feel better. So we, we always set that expectation that we are a minimum of 90 days. And then after that, they get to decide, I say, stay as long as your body is seeing benefits. Mm -hmm. And so they can stay at the level that they started. They can go up, they can go down. Um, we just want to meet them where they are and help them feel better long-term. What, what are some of the things that most you said that they've tried things before and with maybe they failed or whatever? Like what are, what are some of those things usually? Uh, massage, chiropractic, acupuncture, PT therapy, um, injections, steroid injections, all kinds wow. of different things that they've tried and, and, and not seen results from. Um, I think that a lot of the times they go to PT and PT is heavily relied on the homework. You have to do the homework. And so they don't see results because they're not doing the homework. Mm -hmm. um, well, and PT is more strength-based. Yeah. yeah. Which is important. Very true. Very right. true. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I think that just a, for us, they like to come to us because, again, it's that accountability. It's that, you know, coming often and, and creating that relationship with the flexologist that holds them accountable and the fact that we call them and remind them about their appointments and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. And it's a good, fun environment, relaxing environment. Yeah. One of our mottos is simple, fun, effective. So the way that we would present that for you guys' terms would be simple, just show up. Absolutely. Yeah. Lay down. Fun. Lay you're going to have a good relationship. Yeah. Fun. You have a good relationship with yeah. your flexologist and effective. Well, if you do it, it works. Mm -hmm. Right. So what are some techniques that you use to keep it engaged with, with the client that you have? Cause something that. You mean I, as they're progressing? Yes. As they're progressing, okay. because I'll just give you a little backstory. <clears throat> the reason that I asked this question, um, Denver, who you just met, she worked in restaurants. Okay. before and in, uh, for her whole life and in restaurants, it's very quick, fast interactions. You may never see this person again. Right. But in personal training, it's relationships also, oh, but yeah. now they're extended yes. relationships. Both are customer service, both are, both are relationship based, but one comes with a long time horizon of maintaining that relationship. What are some techniques that you use to keep a client engaged and wanting to continue their journey with stretching? Um, that's actually a really good question. I don't think anybody's ever really asked me that. Really? No. Okay. Um, well, it's... Maps? We do a map scan. It's a body assessment, a body movement assessment. Um, we do that. We try to do that every month to see if they progress forward. Um, mm. And then also just verbalizing to them. Like if I'm going into a stretch that I know that they've, you know, so... Sorry. That's okay. You can lift that up a little bit too. It kind of oh. down. So just like lift up. Yeah. There, there you go. I'll, I'll come in. I'll come in. Okay. okay yeah. No worries. I'm okay though. Yeah. You're okay. good. Do your thing. Yeah. Um, I have a client who's been coming to me for about a year and just the other day, like I know I see him twice a week, but just the other mm -hmm. day I was going into his hamstring stretch. This guy came to me with sciatic pain. Um, his hamstring was barely coming up. That's okay. Yeah, you're, you're yeah, good. Yeah, you're, his you're hamstring good. would go up like maybe this high. Now he's way past 90. Okay. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And you know, I was like, I cannot believe how much you've progressed. And we we're just like laughing, having a good time on the table. Mm -hmm. um, Pictures. Pictures. Um, pictures. Oh, what do you take pictures of? Their progress. Like, so like they, their range of motion? Mm -hmm. You take a picture we'll of Sometimes we'll take before pictures. Um, usually if they're like sitting up in the pike position and they're going to touch your toes, mm -hmm. we'll take that. And then like just depending on how fast they make progress, we'll take an after photo. We show them, you know, look where you were and then look where you're at. People love visual feedback. Yeah. Results, Results are motivating. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So you have to show them the results. Tell us more about the maps thing. So you do it in the beginning and you do it every month, you said? Correct. Yeah. Okay. The, um, so it's like this screen cause technology is so cool. It's like this screen that they stand in front of with like a blank wall behind them and they do three overhead squats, just body weight squats. And they get a result of, it's called a map scan, which is mobility, activation, posture, and symmetry. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gives them like an overall composite score of zero to a hundred. Um, nine times out of 10, their score is going to probably be in the twenties or thirties, but we always encourage them like, that's okay. It's mm -hmm. completely normal. That's why you're in here to get stretched. And we're going to figure out 
you know, what we can work on to help this score progress. And then you're modifying your protocol based on, because the maps, does it break down the different body parts? It does. There will be red circles, which is pretty severe, or yellow circles, which is just kind of minor. Um, I don't think they have green circles for for great. positive stuff. Great. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, just nothing there. So if nothing's there, then that's then great. it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll tell um, you everything that's bad, but if it's good... Whatever. Like, yeah. And I think a lot of the times maps will tell them stuff that they already know, but mm -hmm. then sometimes it will highlight things. That, yes. Like you're talking visual... about with that like compensation issue. It's yes. like the other side will highlight and they're like, wait, but my injury is on this side. So yeah. it is a pretty cool way to show them continuous progress over time. Uh -huh. And I think, we, you know, we, we harp on that. It's like a trend. It's you can't focus on that one day and that Correct. one score. We need you to see you see it over time and see it improve. And it can it can go up and down. Um, but we just want to see a steady increase. Yeah, for sure. I feel like that is kind of feeds into what we were talking about earlier, where someone has a, they come in for one specific mm -hmm. thing, but then you do your initial evaluation. Yes, yeah, so if they go into that squat, um, but they see that the other side is more red or not activating, mm -hmm. it's just they're compensating. And then does the the map the maps comes before you do your initial? Yes, usually before because okay. mm -hmm. we'll go over the map score and the map scan, and then we that's wherever I do the assessment, and I'll even kind of um, put those together. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I, I'm, while I'm stretching. Yeah, I'm yeah. imagining that they see the maps and they're like, yeah, okay, and they're like, and they and it has a little bit of confirmation, but then whenever you on the table out also physically show them yes how what you're doing matches the map score, they're like, ah. They'll be, oh yeah, it's mind blowing sometimes to some people. Uh huh. They're like, oh, just like the map scan. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then from there, it's about creating that in engagement yep. and and keeping them stretching on a regular yeah. basis. You know, um, tell me what about Stretch Lab is like the main thing that you guys love and kind of why someone should try Stretch Lab specifically over maybe, you know, doing it on their own. That's maybe different from the other stuff that we talked about today. Is there anything specific? I, I would say that our environment and the co our, my, our coworkers and our team really bring something special to the table. Mm -hmm. And um, the PNF is like magic. They really will see it immediately that, that they can go deeper into the stretch. And mm -hmm. that does, it gives them affirmation. It makes them want to keep coming. Um, and then we hold them accountable. We help them keep coming back to reach their goals. So I think that's why Stretch Lab is so unique. Yeah. What about, do you have anything specific? Well, I love my job because, and not, I guess a lot of people can't really say that. Um, so it's very I true. go to work to de-stress. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And Whenever, then, yep, I get, I see who I have for the day and I check their notes, see you know, how they've been progressing and I look forward to stretching all my clients. Yeah. I love <laughs> engaging and I love, I guess my favorite part would be I love educating them. Um, just when they come in and they lay on the table, they tell me, you know, they're sore from the workout before and like we're assessing and we're just like talking about range of motion. It's just, I love it. I love explaining yeah. And in that, on that note, if you have a plan in mind for someone, how often are they coming in and maybe you have to change the plan because of something that they tell you? Does uh, that happen? Probably. Oh yeah, that happens. Mm -hmm. Um, especially people who work out the day before and they're just like, Oh my gosh, my hamstrings and my glutes are just, you know, on I, fire I'll, I'll probably still stretch it gently just yeah. to kind of loosen it up a little bit. But I mean, sometimes we have to tweak the game plan. Yeah, for sure. And that's why we have to just reiterate, you know, that it it's it's an uphill battle. You know, it's going to take time um, to yeah. see the proper result. Yeah, that kind of goes back to the initial conversation, uh, setting the expectations, right, that it's going to take time. This is something you do continuously. And I, we were just talking to um, – we have a small team. There's um, seven of us in total, if you include Sean. Um, six of us being – Trainers, what'd you say? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, six of us are, are trainers. Well, Denver is becoming a trainer, so okay. five of us are trainers. One is a trainer to be trainee. Yeah, trainer and, and then we have uh, Sean <laughs> to show everyone all the stuff that we do, right? And um, dang, I forgot where I was going with that. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. Um, yeah, I forgot where. That was oh, a lovely story, though. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks. Introduce you to the cast. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we were having a meeting just this morning with, with the team, 
about reminding people of the expectations that were set with them three months ago, six Mm -hmm. months ago, 12 months ago when they first started, you know, and that's just so important with everything fitness, you know, maybe even when it comes, do you still do CrossFit? I do not. Oh, I did it for 13 years. Um, coached for about, I think seven or eight of the years. Uh huh. And so now just more like tired, more kind of general (laughs) fitness stuff. Yeah. Weightlifting. Um, I actually did my first strongman competition the other week with Travis and Eve. Okay. How'd you do? Well, I did get first place. Okay. But wow. <laughs> I say <laughs> that humbly. <laughs> it was in the That's novice so level. It you doesn't know, matter. Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. My face is about to get real red. Dang. So. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. It was fun. It was a, a different experience from CrossFit yeah. to Strongman. So. Okay, cool. And are you going to continue to go in that direction, or was it just like sure. something you did for no, fun? No, it was fun. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. I love strength training. Yeah, so. it is. Um, you know, we the term that we use is – Functional fitness. Functional fitness. You know, I know everyone says that, but um, I, I, another term that I like to use actually is what I call functional bodybuilding mm. because the reason that I, I like to use that term and what I say, that's kind of what we do as personal trainers with, with OTG fitness, functional bodybuilding because bodybuilding is safe. The movements are safe, even the compound movements. You're either working the upper body or the lower body. If you're doing a full body movement, it's something that's more simple. It's not like a snatch mm-hmm. or a jerk or, or mm-hmm. something like that, right? So bodybuilding movements usually are safe. Mm-hmm. Then, but we put a functional spin on them, okay. you know? And um, so it's just a little bit of a different approach, I guess, to what everyone calls functional fitness. Uh, what about yourself? What, what, are you, what are you doing these days workout-wise? And how, does that, how, do, how do you take your stretching and, and apply it there? Yeah, so um, I cycle. So okay. at Rush Cycle, big fan of cool. Rush Cycle. I've been in Russian a long time. I do remember. Uh, sorry to interrupt <laughs> with Rush Cycle. <laughs> Every time I would go, I'd be like, "Why did I do this again? <laughs> it is so hard." It's fantastic. I did not cardio. have that experience. It I is like, so hard. So good after. We actually have cycle. a stretch lab team that tries to go every Sunday. Yeah, really? We yeah. We all go die together. I mean, yeah. it's <laughs> great. It's great workout for you. And when you're done, you feel amazing. Oh, yeah. Because you're done. You the don't endorphins, you know? yeah. Yes. But yeah, I just remember every time, like, why did I show up again? <laughs> but I mean, I was always glad that I did, you know. But anyway, sorry. Continue. No, you're fine. Yeah. Um, and then I would say, like, I'm getting back into moving again after my injury. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like to do a kind of combination Pilates and then, like, a bodybuilding style, like, lifting. Okay. So, like, a little bit of both. Cool. Do you have any specific stretches that you recommend for people that spend a lot of time on a bike? Spend a lot of time with hip flexors. Okay. Like this is uh, so it, my, uh, for me exactly. Like uh, my hip flexors are so tight. So like runner stretch would love that. Can you like, break that down for us? Oh God, no, I can't. <laughs> like runner stretch, like a deep lunge. Yeah. yeah like can you break that? Yeah. Pushing the hip flexor down. Yes. Yeah. So so how would I do that though? So as I'm a cyclist, hmm. and I'm looking for a, a stretch that's gonna be really effective for me. Can you can you break down what that stretch looks yeah, like? Yeah, runner's lunge. Um, it's you're just gonna go down into a lunge with one leg. Uh, maybe a little bit of a wider stance, and you can just kind of kind of. Sorry, I keep hitting. This <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Just Abusing the mic. Man. <laughs> she, she won one strongman competition. Yeah, she she can do whatever act. she wants. I don't know how to act. Oh wow. <laughs> um, so I'm down on one knee in a yes, lunge position. Yes, down on one knee in a lunge position, okay. and you're just pushing, um, just kind of help like gravity. You're just pushing that hip flexor to the ground to try to stretch it out. Okay, so I'm I'm down on one knee, one foot's in front of me, one knee's on the ground. And it's the back, it's the back leg is what you're stretching, uh-huh. right? Pushing that hip flexor forward. So yeah, you're pushing that hip mm-hmm. forward and then yeah. feeling the stretch. Your the hip flexor is in the front of the hip, correct? Right, and that's the muscle that always is really tight from sitting a lot. Yes, correct. a lot of sitting, um, and then because when you're on a bike, it's it never really fully extends, I right. guess, and it's just mm-hmm. constantly staying active. Yeah, because when you walk or you run, when your back leg is, when your leg is backwards, about to come forward, your hip flexor is, at, is in engaged. a stretched position. Oh, right? yes. Yeah, yes. it's in a stretched position, yes. right? So you're just maximizing that mm-hmm. stretch position because when you're on a bike, that never happens. Your leg never gets Correct. quite fully extended behind you. I would you. say, I mean, and going to back to stretching um, for cyclists, just all those big muscle groups in your legs, um, even your glutes. Glutes, mm. quads, hamstrings, calves. Yeah? Yep. Can you give us a good glute stretch? Um, yes. So very similar. I guess it's like the piriformis, mm-hmm. um, sitting in the chair, just put your ankle forward and then come up like that. 
Yeah, so make a like a ninety degree. I'll take one foot, put it on top of your knee. Yep, figure right. four. Yep. yep, figure four. Figure four. Yeah, I'm sitting in a yeah, chair. Yeah, and then um, you kind of lean forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, feel that glute stretch. They actually do that. They do some post stretching for the class, and this is one of them that they do. Oh, oh. in the yeah. rush cycle yeah. class. Yeah, yeah. Cycle. awesome. Yeah, very Just a cool. Shout out to rush cycle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you go to the one they over there. They take care on, of their clients on Marina <laughs> Bay. Do. Yes. Yeah, I used to. It's go to that right next to our stretch lab. League really. Okay. Same strip center. Wow. Yeah, I know. I know where that's at. And you're in the little strip center right behind it. Yes. Or in this the the little building that Rush Cycles because it is uh, the little building it. right there. Yeah, right? it's its own self, and then we're behind them. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It. Okay. Cool. Uh, with Anytime Fitness and T Box. I've heard of T Box. Yeah. I've not been, but I've heard it's pretty cool. It it's is pretty, pretty cool. cool. Tried it. We've done pop ups there before. It's yeah. Fun. It's fun. Um. Okay. Awesome. Well, tell us if, if we want to try it out. We want to try Stretch Lab. What do we do? Definitely go to Facebook or Instagram and click on our link and get a free introductory session. So you just fill out your information and then you, with somebody from my team will call you and get you scheduled for that first introductory session. You can also go on our website, um, www.stretchlab.com slash locations dash whatever location is. So Clear Lake or League City. And yeah. So the first one is free. That includes the maps yes. and and a stretch. So that's a 50 minute. First one is 50% off. Okay. So $49 okay. for the first one for 50 minutes. Okay. And then if they want to do 25 minutes, it's $29. Okay. Awesome. And yes, that includes the map scan. And that would and come with, with your mm-hmm. first map scan. So you can have an idea. Yeah. So you can do a, a couple, you can do the session. You have the map scan and you kind of have a, a good game plan yeah. of, of what you can do from there. So absolutely. Awesome. Well, is there anything that we missed? Anything that we should cover before we kind of wrap up? Oh. No, I felt like it was very thorough. That was very thorough. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Awesome. Well, do you guys, um, any, do you want to put out your own stuff um, for where people can uh, find you or do you just send them over to Stretch Lab and they can find you through there? That would you um, Instagram at Stretch Lab League City or at Stretch Either Lab one. Clear Lake. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's just uh, Stretch Lab Clear Lake, Stretch Lab League City. Yep. yep. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Sean, do you have any questions? Um, I do. Uh, I have stretching. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. Um, I was just thinking, so I'm a photographer and videographer. Um, I am sitting at a desk for a lot of times editing, but at the same time, I will have days where I'll be on my feet for, um, I don't know, eight to 10 hours a day, like shooting a wedding. So I was just uh, wondering if you guys had any type of stretches recommended for someone that has that kind of duality in life. Um, to be honest, you could probably benefit from like a full body stretch just cause Feels you're like you need to you come hold, holding a camera, <laughs> camera in here, right? Yeah. yeah Maybe, yeah. uh, how we talked earlier about the door frame stretch. Okay. Get the, the chest stretched out. Um, you could do something that's called lumbar rotation. You just lay on your back and you just take one leg over. Mm, okay. Um, it's going to mm-hmm. kind of get the hips, glutes and that low back and you can kind of slowly just. Take turns with the leg. Okay. Um, that'll warm up the back a little bit. Um, old school hamstring stretch, just bend over, touch your toes. Okay, cool, cool. Or the straddle, you know, widen your feet to like a V and go forward. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Runner's lunge. Or you can like come that. see us at Stretch Lab. Yeah. Yeah. Come, yeah. come on, Sean. Yeah. Come get a stretch. <laughs> come on, Sean. Yeah, I'll definitely yeah. come through. That sounds like, <laughs> yeah. it sounds like it'd be pretty fun. I was yep. looking at some of the sessions online, so I was like, man, that looks That's pretty looks pretty comfy Chill vibes. for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. very cool. I appreciate yeah. you guys coming on. Thanks for educating us on uh, Stretch Lab, everything you guys do. Uh, and our goal here is just to help Houston make its way up the ladder of health and fitness, being flexible, mobile, and strong are all pieces to that. So hopefully we can continue to work together and, yeah, um, great. and make that happen. So guys, please share this episode um, with someone that needs to learn about stretching. If they're curious of Stretch Lab, maybe you've heard of it, you're not sure about it. Hopefully we covered enough information for you today to know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, sorry. Peace.